I was going to do this video tomorrow night, to be perfectly honest with you, but fuck it. I can't sleep, so I'm doing it now. What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy. It's your pal, Spass Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check here with another topical with another topical video. Um, going to do, this is a little bit of old news now. I'm going to talk a, um, a lot about Ryback, actually, because Ryback is gone from WWE. He's uh, gone on to do other things. He's been very vocal in the past week, but what he's been vocal about and the way he's gone about certain things is something I want to talk about momentarily. At the end, I am going to talk about Triple H for a second because, you know, there is, uh, there is, an, there is a question about Triple H that we've all wanted answered since WrestleMania, and I'll get to that later on. Ryback, as we all know, had a lot of falling out with the WWE about three months ago, went home to ride out his contract. His contract is up, and he is done with the WWE. And he took to he did it, he did part of this on Instagram and part of this on Periscope, which I've never used. I've only seen the video of it after the fact. Anybody who knows anything about Periscope or can tell me how the fuck that shit works, my camera's slipping. We can fix that right there. Uh, and that's what it is. So what I'm going to talk about with Ryback, the source because I'm trying with these topical videos to uh, to list my sources as best as I can. Uh, the sources are Instagram and, Paris and, uh, and a Periscope Q&A, both of which he did, both of which he did in his car. So if you're driving around in, uh, where is he, Las Vegas in the Nevada area, and you see the big guy in the big guy mobile, just, just sort of stay out of the way. Apparently he spends a lot of time on Periscope and Instagram while he's driving. But in his, in his video that he d makes his initial announcement in, Starts off by wishing the WWE best in their future endeavors, which is a big middle finger right away. I like that. We will no longer be conducting business. I like the way he phrased that. It's not that I have left the WWE. I was fired by the WWE. I am no longer in the WWE. We are no longer conducting business. Which doesn't sound like much, but it, 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 it's important because the way he's phrasing it, it's not like, oh, I've lost out, woe is me. I'm not getting anything else from them, and they're not getting anything else from me. That's a, it's a good mindset to have, and, and as a performer, as a worker, uh, you know, who values, you know, who values uh, what he brings to the table, what he has to offer, uh, I think it's good that he, that he phrases it that way. You are not benefiting from me, I'm not benefiting from you. This is not a one-way scenario. I like that. Uh, does, the, does the typical classy thing, thanks all the superstars they had a chance to work with that made his WWE career what it was. Makes the announcement that on August 8th, which is now five days ago, he's releasing or he's opening up the website feedmemore.com, which will include his new clothing line, uh, a motivational book that he's apparently written over the past period of time, whatever, and um, and he's got his own brand of uh, vitamins and, and sports supplements and whatnot. So he's doing a lot. He's not just going out there and selling merch. He's he's gone on a on a helping people. On, on a helping people trend, so to speak. You know, he wants people to be more active. He wants them to be athletic. He wants them to be mo motivated and successful. Whatever. And along with that, he does have the clothing line, so he has his own merch as well. Um, he'll also be wrestling full-time, and he, he chose this opportunity to plug the website bookthebigguy at yahoo.com, which is funny because since this this came out, I, I saw on Twitter, um, you know, when they... When they do the digital versions of like the the fight cards, the fight posters, and all that sort of thing. There's several places that I've seen he has been booked, and he's not Ryback, obviously. Although apparently he did uh, somehow legally maneuver the rights to the name Ryback. Some places are just booking him as the big guy, so it's Joe Blow versus the big guy. Um, that I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know how well that'll take off. It takes. It sounds about as good as No Way Jose, doesn't it? But he's out there, he's putting his name out there for booking, he's available, you know, he's available to the masses uh, of pro wrestling, he can ply his craft in other places, and, you know, A, he might get to be a big, a bigger fish in a smaller pond, B, he can take the fact that he was in WWE and hope that a company will use that to boost themselves up and rah 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 He ends it off with a quote, he says, successful people are always hungry, what are you? And then he does the feed me more bit. Now... Him in, in, a, in an arena full of people that are chanting with him, saying "Feed me more," um, was effective. It was a it was a good little shtick there. Him shouting "Feed me more" into his webcam in his car by himself is is a little concerning. 
I'm just putting that one out there. I know he's trying to put a punch on what he sees to be an Instagram promo. But, uh, I don't know. It is what it is. The Periscope thing is apparently interactive. Apparently, from what I can see from the screenshots, it's a lot like when we do the when we do the Google Hangouts, me, Christian Guapo, and, and you guys join in on the chat, which you guys always do, which is coming up soon, by the way. Got to figure out a date and all that sort of thing, and I'll let you guys know. Hopefully, I won't be flying solo. Hopefully, I won't have to be saved by the angry Mark again. Thank you again for that angry Mark. Um, but basically, he's reading the questions off the Periscope gimmick, and he's answering them as we go. So you kind of have to guess what the questions were because they're not legible. Um, but he basically he's in the he looks like he's in the car again. He's answering questions now. So now he's not only on camera, he's reading shit while he's driving, which is always which is always a good time. But uh, somebody must have said something along the lines of who dropped the ball with you, and he says it's not a case of anybody dropping the ball. Uh, I'm perfectly capable of gaining momentum outside the WWE. I like what he does here, and, and I'm not going to be quoting him verbatim, but the general consensus of what he says in a lot of these questions is, I'm not insulting the WWE, but the WWE isn't everything. Like, you can go be successful. He doesn't name any other companies, but I mean, it's what a lot of wrestlers have been saying recently. If you don't want to wrestle for WWE, you can wrestle for ROH, you can wrestle for New Japan, Lucha Underground, ROH, um... You know, all these other places. I was about to say NXT because so many people think NXT is a separate company. It's not. Oh, no, no. Um, you know, when I was in WWE, um, you know, WWE was the cause. Uh, and I lost a lot of matches and I lost a lot of momentum and I lost a lot of face for the cause. And, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not down about that uh, because there's a lot more to life than fake as fuck punches and kicks. Um you know, my, my idea is of success is if I can if I can make some money and I can help people along the way. If you can make money and help people along the way, that's a good life. And it goes back to talking about his website again. It's not just merch. He's he he wants to get people up at athletic. He's got the sports supplements. He wants people to worry about their fitness. You know, he's got the book. He wants to motivate people and all that sort of thing. Now, in in addition to that, does he also have like T-shirts and merch and all that sort of thing? That's cool. But I do have to give the guy credit. I know a lot of people think Ryback's a jobber, and and I, I'm not gonna lie. There's a lot of times where I looked at Ryback as a jobber. The brief period of time where I thought that we were gonna get the tag team of Zig back was a lot of fun. But I digress. Um. Uh, just keep in mind, even though I've, uh, you know, I fell so so damn low on the totem pole, I am one of the few in WWE that was actually allowed to beat John Cena. It's a nice little dig. I don't remember him beating John Cena though, so there's that. Um, somebody asked him about the fans, and he goes he goes back into character a little bit here. He's like, you know, I, I love the fans. The fans got me where they are. Most of the fans are awesome. Some of them are stupid. And he does the thing from the the gimmick there. Somebody asked him if he's interested in UFC or MMA, and he says uh, no. His his goal is pro wrestling. His goal is his personal endeavors. Uh, MMA would be an entirely different, brand new start. Um, you know, it would be a brand new set of training. It would be a brand new regimen. It would be a brand new uh, brand of of sport for him. But he did. He was sure to cap that sentiment off with having a ridiculous amount of respect for it. Um, talks about. He talks about. They ask him about his attire. They say, um, "When you go back to the Indies, are you going to go back to the RVD style single?" And he says, "Yeah, you know, that's my attire. That's my crazy cartoon character. Um, my crazy cartoon character outfit." And he goes into this little story, which I thought was kind of cool. Apparently, really early in his run, Vince said that he was just another meathead and we're all meatheads and you should just wear trunks and Ryback said well well no this is what I'm comfortable in you know this is my gimmick it's part of what makes me me and all that sort of thing and he got to stay in the singlet for a bit longer but his booking went down the tubes so I guess he said uh, basically he says you know I thought I won that argument but I really lost and uh, they, so they asked him why why did you eventually go to trunks and he says and his only comment was, the trunks were for the old man so another one for 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 Vince there um, he go somebody asked him about CM Punk and he goes he goes out of his way and I and I will give him credit for this he gives credit Punk credit for you know most people don't recognize what a big transition transitioning from what we do in the sports entertainment realm to a legitimate uh, combat sport environment uh, what a transition that is and the effort and dedication that would take 
He says, I never had a problem with CM Punk. Anything I said negative about him was only in response to a bunch of bad stuff that he said about me. You know, he called me the steroid guy. And then he got all somber for a second, and he was like, you know, Punk, if you knew how clean I was, you know, you'd feel really bad about yourself. You'd, you'd, you'd be really upset with yourself if you knew just how natural I am. Um... Somebody asked him if WWE is fake, and his response was, yes, WWE is fake as fuck, but we all love it. Um, somebody asked him about Goldberg, about the comparisons between him and Goldberg. He said he'd love to fight Goldberg. At some point, he thinks they could have an excellent match based on his style. Somebody asked him if he would fight Jeff Hardy. He said, you know, he would love to fight Jeff Hardy. That's not on the table right now, but he will be fighting broken Matt Hardy very soon, and then he mumbles something that you can't really make out, but he says, you know, soon, sometime in November asked him if uh, if he would be interested in competing in TNA. Uh, he said, you know, you never know. You know, never say never in wrestling. And uh, I will say right now, I'm going to divert from this for a second. I know that Aaron Rex, a.k.a. Damian Sandow, debuted in TNA last night, I think. I haven't watched TNA since Bound for Glory. You all remember me ordering Bound for Glory and then getting ripped for it through an entire NXT review by by my good friend Kristen. Um, but it is true, since that Bound for Glory, maybe two or three weeks after that Bound for Glory, I just gave up. I mean, we don't have Pop TV up here, we don't have Discovery, whatever gimmick, whatever. Um, I, I don't know if I would watch TNA now if we did get the channel up here. I mean, the same reason I don't watch Lucha Underground is because we just don't have it up here. You know, uh, apparently they won themselves a big battle, um, you know, getting the episodes and the seasons of Lucha Underground on Netflix. But again, that's the American Netflix accounts, not the Canadian ones, so I don't get that either. Um, so yeah, Damien Sando, I saw his promo in uh, in TNA. The, the, he cut the I'm a WWE guy that's now in TNA promo. They dropped the ball with me, now I'm in TNA, TNA's fucking great, they're the best thing in the world, they're going to let me do my thing named off a bunch of other people. I'm not going to do a whole video on it because I don't watch the TNA product, so there's really no importance to it for me. But they asked Ryback if he would go to TNA and his comment was just, you never know. Um, asked him why he was fired. Uh, he said he wasn't fired. He allowed his contract to run out and he chose not to renew it. Um, he said, just so any of you know, in case you've heard anything else, it wasn't about money. It was about a lot of other things, probably because they were booking him like a jobber. Oh, yes. Uh, they try to get him going, they try to get him involved in the WWE universe, Conor McGregor shit, and he says, the WWE McGregor issues don't really concern me, because I'm not a WWE superstar anymore, and he just, you know, couldn't give a shit less, and there was a lot of stupid things that people asked him throughout this as well, I think they asked him how, how much Virgil charges for an appearance, they asked him how big Batista's cock is, which is wonderful, and then, but somebody asked him, um, would you ever, would you ever wrestle midgets? And he said, yeah, I wouldn't mind having a midget match or even a midget luchador match. I think it'd be highly entertaining. Uh, people that only know me from WWE don't know how diverse my styles are. I don't know how you market Ryback or Ryan Reeves versus a bunch of midgets. I, I really don't. And that's really awkward because the link that I have for this Q&A, that's where it cuts off. I mean, there's a lot of cool things out here. He's, he's given his respect to MMA. He's not going to throw his hat in the Conor McGregor shit. He... He acknowledges the Goldberg comparison, you know, he's going to fight one of the Hardys soon. Um, you know, cleared the air a little bit about the CM Punk stuff. Um, got his gripes out about the WWE and Vince McMahon without being incredibly disrespectful, and he called him an old man, but he is an old man. So, there's that, and like I say, it sounds like the guy is is finding the silver lining at the, at the end of the cloud, because he left a place that didn't see him as anything, really. Like, he had one match with CM Punk only because John Cena was injured, uh, and then what did they do with him after that? Now, just because he's got the former WWE superstar uh, thing in front of his name, any minor league, and I, and I don't say that to insult minor leagues at all, but WWE is what they is, or is what they is what it is. English, on, now. Um anything else is smaller than WWE. That's just a fact. So any other small company is going to take somebody like a Ryback, who's A, built like a brick shithouse, and B, has worldwide name recognition, and put them on their show. He's going to be great filling his his, uh, his fight card with stuff like that. Um, you know, he's got he's got his own endeavors going on. I say I say one more time, the clothing line, the, the book sales, the 
sports supplements, the uh, the feedmemore.com. It, it sounds like the guy, it, it, it you don't have to give a shit about Ryback, but we as wrestling fans, I think, should be happy for somebody like this because, you know, you go back 10, 20, 30 years, you got guys that left WWE and their life spiraled. They went into substance abuse or, you know, they went into, you know, really, really dark places and couldn't really pull themselves out. And some of them, to this day, <coughs> Hulk Hogan, can't separate themselves from the character and all that sort of thing. And then you never really recover as a human being. But now you get modern day, you have guys like Edge, who went on to be an actor, Daniel Bryan, who went on to become a commentator, Corey Graves, whose career got cut off extremely early. Um, the Rock obviously went off to Hollywood to do his thing. Jericho has his band. Uh, other wrestlers obviously went and found success in other companies. And now you have Ryback, who not only sounds like he's got a hell of a plan, he's got multiple hell of a plans, English on. Um, so it's, it's good, you know, you see somebody walk into that world of WWE and walk out clean on the other side. It's a good feeling. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a happy ending, so to speak. So I think that's really cool. And I think the guy, as much as he can, like still being honest with himself, yeah, WWE dicked me around. I'm not going to lie about that. But I think he's walking out with his head relatively high and he's doing it in a relatively dignified, respectful manner. So for that, if nothing else, I got to give the guy extreme kudos. So happy trails to Ryback. Indeed, best of luck in all of your future endeavors. And it's it's all good. I mean, I don't watch indies, so I'm not going to see you, but whatever. Triple H hasn't been seen on TV in quite a while. Now, if you want to come... You, you you can include the, the sort of out of kayfabe moment that he had with Cedric Alexander at the CWC, which was fucking a great little thing. But I think he was there as a WWE official. He wasn't there as the game. He wasn't there as the authority Triple H guy. I think we were just seeing Paul Levesque in that moment, honestly. I could be wrong. There could be some story coming on down the line that I don't know about, but that's how it came off to me. Triple H, the character, hasn't been seen since... WrestleMania 32, when Roman Reigns defeated him to become the WWE champion, to become the holder of the WWE championship in front of over 100,000 people in Dallas, Texas. That's how history will remember Reigns and Triple H, but it won't mention how the game then disappeared into thin air after losing to Roman and hasn't been seen since, which means he's unlikely for SummerSlam as well. There has been so much speculation about Triple H's whereabouts as a character on WWE programming since WrestleMania. Until very recently, there was no news when he would be returning to WWE television. According to ringsidenews.com, Triple H hasn't been featured in WWE programming over the past four months because there is a lot of uncertainty about his in-ring future. As of this writing, the plan is for the game to wrestle at next year's WrestleMania 33 in Orlando, but there is no information about who he could be facing and that it could be an up-and-coming talent from NXT. Now, being in Orlando makes all kinds of sense that you would have him fight somebody from NXT. Um, you don't even have to write the story. You can just let it be that the fans know that he is the mastermind behind NXT. And he wants to fight one of his students. He wants to give... He wants to hand one of his students a platform on a silver platter. Um, Kevin Owens would be an interesting choice. The, de the game versus the demon could always be a lot of fun. And there is always the possibility of Nakamura versus Triple H on the grandest stage of them all. Who would you all want to see as his next opponent in the WWE? Now, you guys know I've been saying it for a while. Hey, I talked a lot about cruiserweights. Cruiserweights are back now. Um, talked a lot about King of the Ring. King of the Ring might be coming back now. I have been talking forever. If you want to have a Triple H feud, Triple H is a part-timer. There's one other part-timer out there that could have a hell of a match with a lot of history, and that's Triple H versus The Rock. I don't care what the potential is. Triple H versus The Rock will get my money. That being said, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. And if you're going to do somebody from NXT, uh, the three that they mentioned are probably the three most likely to go. Uh, Kevin Owens versus Triple H would be great. The promos would be great. The match would be physical. Rowdy, rowdy, rah. rah, rah. Um, Triple H versus Finn Balor would be a hell of a spectacle. You get that big demon entrance on the big WrestleMania stage. Plus, you know, again, you get to sort of lean back on what the fans already know. And the fans already know that Finn Balor is one of Triple H's chosen boys. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. But the mutual respect that those two have for each other is fucking phenomenal. And you could build, you could break kayfabe and just make it about that. 
uh, Finn Balor out of character, Triple H out of character. Hey man, you gave me all these chances, you gave me all these chances. Give me one more chance to show you that you were right to put your faith in me. Let me face you at WrestleMania. Simplest thing in the world. But you want to talk about a physical match. Phys friggin' Shinsuke Nakamura versus Triple H. Just, again, it's one of those shut up and take my money. WWE right now is doing pretty damn all right because there's not very many combinations of things that are not going to get a take my money reaction. You know, we just read recently in the dirt sheets, I can really find one if you want me to, but I really don't want to bother, that Big Show is re uh, retiring at the end of this year. Kane hasn't been seen for a while. We've seen Mark Henry once in the past couple of months. Everybody on the roster has some interest. Even if it's somebody like a Dolph Ziggler, who people don't believe he's in the spot that he should be in, nobody's saying that they don't want to see him on TV at all. Eva Marie is serving its purpose. She's doing the, the, the wardrobe malfunction gimmick, but that uh, that's another story for another day. Uh, Triple H competing against an, any NXT talent at WrestleMania uh, would have to be the final nail in the coffin of the old, you know, Triple H never puts over new stars. Uh, bullshit, which has been bullshit for quite a while. You can't say that the creator of NXT, which has produced pretty much anybody on the roster that we care about right now, um, doesn't care about putting over new talent. He created the Petri dish that all this new talent is festering in. Now, he's in control of NXT. NXT gave Austin Aries and Bobby Roode some shitty opponents for TakeOver, but let's just hope that that was a one and one and done. Um, yeah, this is cool. Like I said, the uh, the Ryback stuff is, is interesting. It, it seems to have ended on a really high note, so I'm happy for that guy. Triple H will wrestle at the next WrestleMania. Who will he wrestle against? I still hope it's against The Rock, but that's me. Uh, anybody else from NXT will give him a decent match. I mean... Hell, if you want to talk about NXT superstars, even something like a Triple H versus a Sami Zayn wouldn't be that bad. Sami Zayn is our new de facto Daniel Bryan, and one of Daniel Bryan's last great feuds was Triple H. So you could really, you could draw those comparisons. You could have Triple H coming back, you know, super authoritative heel. You know, last time some, the crowd got behind somebody this bad, it was Daniel Bryan. Look where he is now. He's just a lowly commentator. You know, pull what Paul Heyman did on Taz years and years and years ago. He used to be a badass, and now he's just a lowly commentator and not even a good one. Um... You could have him giving those same types of warnings to somebody like a Sami Zayn, and that could be a good match for WrestleMania. All kinds of opportunities. We do know that at the tail end of last year, Triple H did renew his competitive in-ring performance contract for another three years. Now, what he does with that uh, is anybody's guess. Could, does he have a contract that's even less than Brock Lesnar's? Probably, but that's because he's doing a couple of other things, mainly, like like I say, cultivating the the... the brand that most of us watch most. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. It's a bit of a ramble. It is the most legit, ridiculous o'clock in the morning that I've done a video in a long ass time. So if I seem like I'm a bit scattered, if I seem like I'm a bit all over the place and probably should get some sleep, it's because all of those things are true. Hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you guys are enjoying the topical videos. I have slowly but surely been getting a lot of response on those topical videos. I got a hell of a response this week for the CWC review going over the um, the Cedric Alexander versus Kota Ibushi match. So if you haven't checked out that video, it seems to be a popular one. It's only one video before this one. Enjoy that. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening to me ramble. I have been Spaz, your YWC reality check. Subscribe up there. Talk down there. Start a conversation. Keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I'll talk to each and every last one of you later, but for right now, I'm tagging out. Bye, guys.